All right, we're ready to begin. Thank you. Fine, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I call the uh, meeting of the Safety and Security Committee to order on Thursday, May 9th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. Meyer, can you give me a roll call, please? Commissioner Simmons. Present. Commissioner Windmiller. Present. Commissioner Cox. Here. Commissioner Galladay. Commissioner Gladney. Commissioner Moore. Present. Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Jackson Jennings. Present. Commissioner Beach. Here. You may proceed. Fine, thank you. Meyer, was there any uh, speaker cards uh, submitted? Yes, we received four public comments for today's meeting. In addition, due to the recent upgrades in the agency cybersecurity system, we learned that a number of public comments had been misdirected prior to the April 19th Board of Commissioners meeting. Those security issues have been resolved. The public comments for today's meeting, as well as those from the April 19th meeting, were distributed to the board and to the staff and are included in today's meeting materials. They will also be included in the minutes from today's meeting. Fine, thank you. And as we're on the topic of the uh, public comments, I'd like to add that the uh, June Board of Commissioners meeting will include an in-person public comment agenda item. The public comment portion of the meeting will be limited as to not interfere with the board's timely conduct of business. Details on the process for the in-person public comment portion of the meeting will be published well in advance of the meeting in accordance with board policy. Online submittal of public comments will remain available. Commissioners will be able to attend in person or remotely. Uh, at this time, I need a uh, approval of the minutes for August the 10th, 2023 at the safety security uh, meeting, open meeting. Do I have a motion if there's no corrections or additions? So moved. Have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Uh, next, I need approval of the minutes of April 12th, 2024, uh, Safety Security Committee open meeting. Is there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Uh, security plant farm update. Uh, Mr. Scott, you have some information for us, I believe. Uh, relative to the secure platform, I'm sorry, my, my audio was breaking up. Relative to the secure platform plan? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. So I just wanted to take a few minutes this morning to give you an update uh, on where we are uh, with this project. I do send out uh, an update on a monthly basis. Uh, the last one... Uh, you should have received uh, within the last week. If you're not receiving those, if you could let us know directly, myself or uh, Melissa Webb, so that we can make sure that you get those, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we try to be very um, specific in those reports uh, to give a, a clear understanding of where the project is. As you all know, my role in the secured platform plan focuses on uh, high security gating, security fencing, uh, and the complete reconfiguration and upgrade of our closed circuit television system to include the, uh, the real-time viewing in a real-time camera center, uh, which has been at work here now at Metro Transit for over a year. And that was really phase one of this project and ultimately uh, needed to be phase one because it becomes a control center for uh, the gating systems moving forward. Although they will operate autonomously, uh, once we have fare collection integration, uh, they will be under constant surveillance, constant monitoring, and we can override uh, the locking me mechanisms as, as we uh, need to. So I want to start out uh, and make sure that I provide you some clarity today on where we are, but I need you to understand that there are two separate projects that are happening. The secured platform side of the of the plan, and then obviously the uh, the new fare collection system, which is being led by uh, Tom Curran, who's with us today. These two projects will marry, uh, so that the the gating system uh, obviously works off 
the technology from the new fare collection system. But as I explained in my, my monthly review, what we knew at the very start of this process was that we could not delay the platform project waiting for the fare collection plan to evolve. We knew that was going to be much more complex. So we needed to figure out a way to operate and make these gates security impactful from the very beginning. Waiting until latter 25 or early 26 to start the platform project uh, would have been counterproductive to overall security uh, and would certainly have not satisfied the boards and the public's uh, demand for us to move forward with this project. So uh, that's what we're doing. We developed a package number one uh, as a beta test or a genesis of this project, and that is Emerson Park. Uh, Fair, or, I'm sorry, Jackie Joyner Kersey, Washington Park, and uh, College. So what I would like to do is uh, share my screen, if you don't mind, and be able to show uh, some illustrations and kind of walk you through where we are now and then how this will ultimately, ultimately marry with fare collection. And when I get to that point, I'd like to turn this over to Tom to give us an update on that project as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share if that's okay. Yes, go ahead. I just need to. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes, sir, I can. Okay. I'm just going to toggle through the slides if you guys don't mind. Here is a depiction of the monthly report that we send out. Again, hopefully you find those very informative. Uh, next, I would like to remind you, if you have not seen the real-time camera center or understand the operation of this new technology that is part of the overall secure platform plan, uh, turning the, the technology of closed circuit television from reactive to proactive, uh, I would encourage you to reach out to Missy. I think she's going to talk about this a little, little bit later. Uh, but we'd love to host you and walk you through the dynamics of how this has greatly enhanced uh, overall security. So let's get to the nuts and bolts of the, um, the plan. Package number one, as I suggested, Emerson Park, Jackie Joyner Kersey College uh, in Washington Park. They are currently under construction. The entire design of the SPP project was coordinated by HNTB, and construction has been awarded for package one and package two to Millstone Weber. Package number one will be approaching substantial completion by early June. Uh, we are moving to put the gating systems in place starting in Emerson Park early next week. And then the following week at the remaining locations, college will be a little bit behind because we're having to make some adjustments to fiber and conduit. Uh, but we feel like that we are on track there. We will realize a short delay uh, in the canopy systems that are coming from New Hampshire. And so the gating systems we put in place, we will realize substantial completion at these locations but there will still be a pedestrian walkway around the gates until the canopy systems uh, arrive. Uh, I would suspect end of June, early July, we will have to then go back to these locations in a non-intrusive fashion and install that technology. That is paramount, paramount for overall gate operation. Package number two, uh, we are going to start uh, the fencing upgrades uh, sometime over the next couple of weeks as we're closing out package number one. Package number two is Del Mar, Forest Park, Central West End, Cortex, Grand, Union Station, and Civic Center. Uh, Millstone Wepper will also be doing the construction in coordination with all of the subcontractors. Uh, we anticipate that package number two will be completed by the end of this year or early January. Are there any questions on that before I move on? 
Any Would questions for Kevin? Go ahead, Kevin. So I just wanted to uh, compliment uh, our discussion of these two packages with some illustrations. So this is a rendering of the Washington Park gating system that you will soon uh, see come to fruition. This is Cortex. And just some live or some real time photographs. Uh, this is an illustration of the new welded wire fencing system that's going in. Uh, this was actually taken, I believe, at Washington Park. Uh, Jackie Joyner Kersey. Here's another illustration of Washington Park from a distance. Uh, Emerson Park, this illustration uh, depicts the preparation of the pads for the gating system uh, that's adjacent to the new public safety building. Emerson Park, we're really pushing for substantial completion right off uh, the bat because of the dedication of the new public safety uh, building that will happen sometime, hopefully in June. And just an illustration of the progress at college. Now, what we recognize is that in package number one and package number two, in the very the very aggressive schedule that we've put in place, we will not we will not realize integration with the new fare collection system most likely. So we had to put an interim operational plan in place. So once these locations are complete, the gating systems will be secured uh, through an on uh, already existing internal access control uh, software or system called Genetech. So Genetech is also our camera software and is, and is now our access control software. These locations will be enhanced with security uh, in order to uh, permit access through the gates for people that are trying to, to access the platforms. So once the technology is put in place, the gates will be security impactful and locked even prior to collection or the new fare collection system being brought on. Beyond package number one and package number two, it's uh, very unlikely that we can move forward with existing the other packages until we have integration with the fare collection system. We do anticipate, and Tom can speak more to this, that we will realize the hardware uh, installation, a significant movement in August of 2025. So our, our plan beyond package two is to bid the remaining four packages in totality and time it with uh, the Federation over to the new fare collection system in August. We still believe uh, as long as we don't face any significant abnormalities, and these are very complex projects, really 39 different projects in total, we still believe that we will reach our January 2026 substantial completion date. So just in summary, I'd like to go through the remaining packages very quickly uh, and tell you where those are. Uh, package number three, Laclede's Landing, North Hanley, <clears throat> both UMSL locations, Rock Road and Wellston. And package number four, both Lambert locations, Stadium, Eighth and Pine, Convention, Skinker, Big Ben and Forsyth. Uh, these packages both are at 95% design uh, as we speak and we anticipate completion in late December, early January. Packages five and six, are at 30% design uh, and package five includes East Riverfront, Fifth and Missouri, Fairview Heights, Memorial, Swansea, Belleville, Shiloh, Scott and Mid-America. Package number six, Shrewsbury, Sunnan, Maplewood, Brentwood, Richmond Heights and Clayton. Again, at 30% design, uh, these will be bid for construction in uh, late December, early January as well as package three and four. So beyond package two, the plan is to bid the remaining system in totality 
so that we can meet the uh, ended target date of January 2026. And just some uh, illustrations from packages five and six. Uh, this is a rendering. I'm sorry, I can't share the whole slideshow. I'm having difficulties, but I'm having to tab through the, uh, the screens. Uh, Laclede's Landing. Uh, this is Skinker. So this is a Caldi's Coffee uh, shop on the corner of Skinker. in the Washington University area, and then a rendering of Big Bend, which is also in the Washington University area. And we're working in close concert with them uh, to finalize these designs. So with that, just a summary, package one is nearing substantial completion. Gate installation will happen uh, over the next two weeks. We are then waiting for the canopy systems on July 1st. We will be able to go back in a non-intrusive way and connect the technology so the gates uh, are able to be locked and controlled. Packages, uh, package number two has already been awarded for construction to Millstone Weber and construction uh, will be starting uh, over the next two weeks, most likely with uh, fencing installations. Uh, and we're hoping to realize substantial completion of package number two in late December, early January. And at that point, we will bid for construction the remaining of the system in order to hit the benchmarks illustrated on the fair collection timeline. So with that, I'd like to stop sharing and ask Tom Curran, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind to take over from here uh, to talk about the uh, fair collection system. Thank you, hey, Tom. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, Brenda, I believe, is going to assist me with uh, the slide presentation. I've been asked to just share a few pictures so that you can see what our new fair collection system will look like, how it relates to the secure platforms project. So the new validators for Metro, for Metro Bus are being provided by Masabi. Metro has been working with Masabi for several years now because Masabi is a firm that is operating our current mobile ticket pilot program. So on this slide, you can see how the validator will be mounted on a stainless steel pedestal, and there will be a validator in front of each SPP gate. Next slide, please. So the same type of validators for Metrolink will also be on Metro Bus. The only difference really is how they will be mounted. Uh, this week, representatives from Asabi were in St. Louis to survey our bus fleet to prepare for the bus validator installation later this year. And the photo in the upper right-hand corner shows a picture of one of those validators on our Gillick bus. There are two scanners on the validator. The optical scanner, which is the white square in the middle, uh, will be used to read paper and electronic tickets. And smart cards will be read by tapping on the lower scanner, just as you would tap and pay at a retail store. The indicator light at the top of the validator will indicate whether the fare presented is valid. There's also a different sound alert for valid and invalid taps. For Metrolink, valid fare media will also unlock the security gates at our light rail stations, as Kevin indicated. Uh, next slide, please. Our new ticket vending machines, or TVMs, will be provided by Indra. This is an image of what the new TVMs would look like. Although a design decision has been made that the exterior of the machines will be stainless steel instead of painted as shown in this picture, uh, just for maintenance purposes. So the new TVMs will appear similar to the Metro existing ticket vending machines uh, with that stainless steel finish. These TVMs will sell the fare media needed to ride Metrolink. Customers will be able to purchase single ride paper tickets, three hour and one day passes, and smart cards for weekly and monthly passes. The new TVMs will accept cash, debit, credit, and both Google and Apple Pay. Uh, as Kevin had indicated, the new TVMs and Metrolink validators are scheduled to be installed in the summer of 2025. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have concerning where we are with the fair collection program. Thanks, Tom. Anybody have any questions for Tom? I guess my uh, only question right now is <clears throat> when the... Um... Like Jackie Joyner cursing and things when they're done. So is that 
is the fair collection is that ready as well like with the turnstiles like you'll have to put your your ticket in or your card and then the turnstile will go will that be ready here in the next month sure i, uh, I can i can answer that this is kevin so uh so we will not have integration with the new fair collection system so we, we will still be operating on the old platform so what on the old fair collection platform so what will happen in the interim and the plan that we have built to bridge the gap between uh, the progress in SPP and the installation of the fair collection system is to devise uh, a structure where we have an in-house uh, software, access control software will actually control the gates. So in this particular uh, situation for the early platforms, package one and package two, security stationed on the platforms will actually check FAIR and then use a proxy card system to release the gates until the new FAIR collection system is brought on. So what I can promise you is that first and foremost, we had to move forward with the platform project. A delay would be uh, uh, not, not productive. So part of the trick to this was, was to be creative and I got to tell you, Commissioner Cox, I got some really talented folks in this company that are working on this project, all right? And so we built an interim plan in order to make these early platforms completely security impactful until, we, until we're until we able to integrate with the new fair collection technology. Yeah, I, that sounds great. And I, I met some of them down there and I was very, very impressed. And like you said, how talented and how they come up with things uh, that we build there at, uh, at by state. So, uh, Missy showed me around, I saw you and I, I was very impressed. So that sounds like a, um, a good idea that, you know, we're still going to basically, you know, the, the turnstile, you know, in, in to basic understand it, it's still going to work. It's just in a different way until the, uh, actual fair, uh, collection system gets, gets up and going. So that's great. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. They will be security impactful. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions for uh, Tom? I, I have one. Um, first of all, thanks, Kevin and Tom, for the presentations. Um, I, I'm glad that we're moving ahead, even though these are not concurrent um, in terms of being operational. But my concern is this. S some stations are very, very busy. So how is it that uh, a security person is going to be able to, in a timely manner, for people to get on the train check each fare um, in a way that doesn't prevent delays um, in the operation of, of, of the trains. Sure, so at those very busy stations, the high volume stations. So the, the, gate, the gate arrays are indicative of the volume at the station. So for instance, um, Central West End will have more gate arrays. Some of those gates will be entry gates, some of them will be exit gates. So we will assign a security staff member to the entrance gates to not delay access. Exiting the platform, uh, that's a free flowing, uh, the, the gates are free flowing as you exit. Um, so getting off of the platform is not an issue. Getting on the platform, I think that the, the system that we're putting in place in the interim will actually be optimum and actually probably work better than ultimately when some of these locations are autonomous. But there will be a security officer assigned to each entry gate. They will check fare and they will allow access through the gate. Large volume events, such as at stadium, uh, the types of gates that we're putting in will allow us to open the gates and just manually check fare as we staff those large events as we normally would. I don't anticipate any major delays. Uh, we will certainly be monitoring that or any delays at all. We will certainly be monitoring that and we'll make the needed adjustments. We just had to be as creative as possible in order to move forward with the platform project in the interim. I appreciate that. I do think that it would be wise to have a pilot for the, for the first several weeks to make sure, because if people miss the train because of this, it's going to be a public relations nightmare. And that's exactly um, why we chose to start uh, small. Uh, with the with the four platforms initially in package one, uh, it will give us an opportunity to tweak and make adjustments before we move into package two in those busier platforms. So we'll have a better idea of what we're dealing with. Appreciate it. Thanks for the update. 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I would, Rose, I would just say that uh, I've ridden Marta in Atlanta and the DC Metro uh, many times and, uh, and other systems, but systems that are larger than ours and they've gotten used to it fairly well. Of course, it, it, I think it just takes time. Um, it pretty, it flows pretty well. And those are very crowded subway stations and uh, you have to swipe your card to even exit. Uh, the only delay is when someone like me bumble shows up and uh, doesn't know what we, what I'm doing, but, uh, but I've noticed that it seems to go fairly well, but there's, I think there's that trial um, period where it's going to take a, some experience and some trial and error by uh, our passengers. So I understand your concern. I agree with that, but uh, I've seen larger systems uh, where it works fairly seamless. No, no, I, I've ridden right. uh, light rail all over the country and I agree. The The question that and concern I have, Terry, isn't when there is integration between the two systems. It's before we have integration and there is um, physical checking of each ticket before you get onto the platform. Um, there, and at large scale, it, it's one thing to learn how to get a ticket and to tap and to get in. It's another to actually have a security person tech, check every single ticket before you're on the platform. So that my concern isn't, it's in the interim period, isn't, it isn't when these are integrated. Very good. Any other questions for uh, Tom or Kevin? Chairman, can I just make a quick point? Yes, sir. So uh, I think these are great questions because the reality is the the curb effect or curb appeal to our fundamental customer is going to be vast. Um, not only are we bringing them through a completely different security paradigm that Kevin has talked about, but we're also moving them through um, integration of a completely new fare system. Uh, one that I think over the long run uh, is is very much wanted and everybody will like the capability to swipe your phone for instance to go in very popular way to access the system and I think I think that'll be very good but um, I think we need to be very very careful and measured about this integration period we have thousands of customers to move through this typically folks don't like change and I think we need to be very careful about it I will note and uh, very positively I and when when Kevin puts out his monthly updates on EP, I almost always get um, questions or thank yous from the investors in that program in keeping everybody updated. Um, so I think that, for instance, um, the uh, the communication um, uh, initiatives put forward both in security and one that Missy is about to talk to ha will bear fruit, but is very important in the integration of these of these systems that we continue to make these investments. In. And I, I think it's very important, especially when we're changing essentially the face of transit in, in the greater St. Louis area, um, that we're careful and measured in, in bringing that to the public. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, Kevin or Tom? Hearing none, Kevin, I got just a couple for you. Um, how do you feel about the timeline uh, that was set? I know you, you, you've got the projected date. Uh, uh, are we pretty confident about that? And uh, how do you feel about it? Well, I'd like to tell you that I'm 1,000% confident, but I'm not going to, OK? I'm going to say that we are going to be close unless we have any substantial delays in the uh, supply chain. We have realized some minor delays, such as with the canopy systems. Um, if we don't have any major hiccups with the integration of fare collection, one of the things I'd like to point out, Mr. Chairman, is the Masabi validators, uh, my internal team, uh, received one of the validators and has been working very collective or very uh, in concert with the with the gating supplier Orion to ensure that the validator will actually communicate with the gate. So we've actually set that up in a lab fashion here. I'm, I sound a lot smarter than I am. I didn't do any of this, by the way. 
Um, but they've actually tested the validator to ensure that we'll integrate with the, the gating system. We are doing everything we can to dot our I's and cross our T's. But we are closing a MetroLink system that its original ge geographic layout was not designed as a closed system. It was designed as an open system. So we are going to find things here and there that we have to address. We are working every day. Something pops up uh, that we have to take a look at. Um, we have, I think this is an important note as well, and probably an opportune time to say this. The majority of the folks here at Bi State at Metro that are working on this project all have other job titles. And when we built this, when we built the, the, the leadership of this team, we tried to assimilate a group of experts from all walks of the company uh, because we knew that this project would be ever dependent on every aspect of Metro operations. From how we flag in safety zones to how we mark utilities to the, the technological um, knowledge that people have and what they bring to the table. So we all come from different walks within the company, but we're all married. But to answer your question, I do feel like if we do not have any major significant delays in the supply chain, if we do not have any significant uh, technological concerns once the fare collection system gets here, I feel rather confident that we will hit our end benchmark of early 26, and I would say January. Okay. I'll go and, out on a limb and say that. Another uh, question now, uh, what has been your uh, biggest challenge? <clears throat> well, I would say the biggest challenge is, listen, uh, and I will just be open and honest and frank with you. Uh, the secure platform plan is a priority for our company. Uh, it has significant public and private investment. It changes the dynamic of the light rail system. It sets a blueprint for future development of light rail and how we approach security. Uh, and my biggest challenge uh, from a leadership perspective is just ensuring that the internal components within the company all understand and realize the significance of this project, meaning there are other projects going on, right? There's there's other currently under construction or we're doing this or we're doing that, but making sure that this project remains aligned as a top priority of the company uh, has been has been my biggest challenge. Oh, I thought you were going to say me pushing. No, I would never <laughs> say that. <laughs> um, um, so looking at it from uh, the crystal ball, um, is there anything that uh, our board can do to complement uh, as we move forward? Is there anything your your wish list would be? From a secured platform standpoint? Yes. No, I, I don't. I don't know the answer to that now. Uh, there, there may be things in the future that we would have to talk about. However, I think we're well aligned now with the ability to handle the gating system in the interim. Uh, we realized that that was going to need to need to happen early on, and we, you know, we built that into our budget in order to be able to do that. Uh, I think the continual support. Uh, I think one of the things that we've done very effectively, and I'm, I'm going to introduce Missy in just a minute, is we have hired her on a full-time basis, and I'll talk a little bit about what her background is to, to focus full-time on security communications uh, and proactive security communications. But I feel very good with where we are. I, I just need to make sure that the experts uh, within the company remain solid, and then I have experience exposure to them because I need their expertise. And so I'm going to, I'm going to remain focused as we become, um, as we get further down the line with this project and we start to, you know, things start to, uh, to rise, uh, the public can see, it's very important for me to stay engaged and keep the different experts uh, prioritized on this project. Well, good. And uh, I would just want to assure the other commissioners that, uh, I am so excited and uh, elated that back when the decision was made to uh, have somebody as a project manager, that Kevin was our choice because uh, I would work with him uh, on a daily basis. And I can tell you the team that he's assembled uh, is next to none. And uh, that's why I'm glad he, he mentioned that it's a, it's a who's who from within the company. And uh, he has went out there and uh, built that team 
And that's why I think we're seeing uh, the schedule be met. And I think this is going to be something that we can all, uh, uh, when it gets up and done and running and all the bugs are worked out of it, we can say uh, something that uh, was teamwork that did it. So uh, with that, uh, Kevin, if you would, would you introduce Missy uh, to the commissioners? I will. So uh, months and months and months and months ago, uh, as Toby and I had continued discussions about security in the program and uh, how we continue to enhance, you know, our messaging and our public perception uh, certainly is top of that list. And he challenged me to look for different ways in order to enhance that messaging going forward to impact and attack uh, the perception that we've had. And so I suggested to him that we uh, reach out to, uh, at the time, uh, recently retired police captain Melissa Webb. Uh, the significance of, of Melissa is that she spent 27 years with the St. Louis County Police Department. Uh, one of her last assignments before she uh, retired was she uh, led the St. Louis County Police Detail here on Metrolink. Uh, she was very involved with the activities uh, from a security standpoint, but also had a true understanding uh, during her time here of by state, uh, the challenges that we face with the transportation system uh, and what what we needed to do to try to realign some of the messaging. I also think it's very um, uh, very efficient that she understands the dynamic of communication with overall law enforcement. And when we have issues, how things need to be articulated and messaged, uh, so she has been tasked with working directly with the media relative to security uh, in a reactive approach, obviously, but also a proactive approach. Uh, but beyond a traditional media, uh, media setting, uh, I was insistent with Talby's support uh, that we develop our own social media platforms and other unique ways to communicate. Because quite frankly, I think, Mr. Chairman, you'll agree, that's the way the majority of the public communicates now uh, in okay. real time. And so we, we, we needed to play that and we needed to be very efficient with that. And again, bringing her on the team, uh, she needed to, although working independently on the security messaging, uh, needed to collaborate uh, with the broader Marcom team and get their support uh, because we're, you know, we're dependent on them as well. So that has been that uh, change is difficult, but it's gone very well. But I would like for her to talk to you a little bit about what, what her priorities are and what she has seen thus far. Missy? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for the introduction, Kevin. But it was 28 years, not 27. <laughs> so what I've done uh, in the short interim that I've been here is that initially I sat back and looked. And we all know that communication is key, right, for successful relationships with communities. I know that that 28 years of service to my community was based in community engagement policing. So what I've done is I translated that to by state. Uh, what we have done is we have opened up five social media platforms to include LinkedIn, uh, X, the former Twitter, TikTok, Instagram and Facebook. Along with that and those inceptions, we've continued to grow our internal tours. I think uh, Commissioner Kass can attest to our, our internal tour. I know I kept him for like six hours. I'm so sorry. Generally, yes. they do, um, but he was gracious. Uh, so the other thing that we've continued to grow is the external meetings. So what I do is basically I go out, I find out what we need to put out there and how we need to educate our community and I and I grow our community. So on the social media platforms, I know that there are a few commissioners that have visited and comment quite often and I appreciate that. Um, it's imperative that that particular, those particular platforms continue to grow. That's why we've included those into our monthly SPP stakeholders report that you'll note on the very bottom of this month. We're trying to continue to grow those. And I can tell you that we've seen super, super huge success and super growth with regard to our engagement, with, a, with regard to most of the social media platforms. What I'm doing there is I'm not only educating the uh, masses of 
SPP, which is a phenomenal project. But I'm also trying to show people that there's a heartbeat, that we have a heartbeat, that our security team is out there. I'm combating all the bad perceptions that other people are putting messages out for us, and we're putting our own message out. You'll note that on the majority of those posts, you'll see our security teams out. That's because I'm out with them. And in that, I'm also speaking to our, our customers, our transit community, trying to find out what it is that they need and where I need to educate them. We're gonna start a new campaign, um, which is in conjunction with the new marketing campaign, not on Metro. I hope you all have seen that. Um, but that marketing campaign, it's a phenomenal campaign. It's about our code of conduct. And it's educating the public with regard to our code of conduct in a different manner. It's bright, uh, it's integrated. Uh, also, it, it has on the very bottom, the educational component that we need to let the public know how it is that they get help. It's amazing to me that while I'm out on the system talking to our transit community, there's a few folks that don't understand. So that's my latest campaign is I'm going to start to educate our public on those social media platforms about how it is that you need to contact us if you need assistance. Uh, along with that, you'll notice that on our social media platforms, I'm keeping up-to-date progress reports on SPP. Uh, we are using our assets to market our SPP campaign. You'll see drone footage, uh, videos of the fences, but videos of the construction that's going on. I'm trying to stay up to date, if not putting out weekly um, social media posts with regard to our updates. On the front of our internal tours, I'm also trying to change the culture internally. I'm trying to bring our different disciplines into our security team so that they can understand what it is that we're doing so that internally that our team members that are out there in the greater by state know all the different things that are going on so that they can help with the educational factor as it spreads throughout our company. Um, I'm really pleased because I, I, I attended a uh, leadership meeting not too long ago. I, I don't know the correct title to it, but uh, at the end of it, I challenged the, the leaders, the future leaders of by state to come and be part of the educational process with us and come and tour. And I asked who had been here and who knew what we were doing. And I saw the hands that were raised and then I saw the ones that weren't raised. And after that meeting, I've got five uh, tours already set up and that meeting was on Tuesday. And I have five tours set up for internal tours to come down and see what the real-time camera center is about and also the SPP project. On the other front, Kevin and his team prior to my inception here, they had done a phenomenal job with vector communications of getting out into the community. Uh, we were going and doing public appearances. So those public appearances have continued to grow and I've taken those over. And it gives me that ability to talk to my community, to grow our transit community, and then at the end, I challenge those individuals that I've met to come out and to participate in being part of our community. It's been very beneficial because what's come from those meetings is that I've been able to grow different relationships, not only along our alignment, but maybe not so much close to the alignment, but on the exterior. So I'm meeting with community members that maybe they don't have anything to do with Metrolink, or maybe there isn't a bus route there but they're learning now about our transit community, which is imperative to the success of our region. Let's see, would you be able to just real quick, Mr. Chairman, if you'll indulge me just for one moment. Yes, relative, sir. relative to SPP, Missy, mm -hmm. how many public engagements have we done relative to secure platforms plan? Well, we've, we've done over 150, but of those 150, you have to realize that there are 10 to 50 to 90 people in each one of those, those moments. So we're, we're making a huge impact in those public appearances. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I, I think that really concludes our part of this, and I just appreciate the opportunity to talk to the board and uh, just appreciate your continued support. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions for Missy? I know Kevin uh, 
Toby both has been keeping me uh, abreast of uh, what she's been doing, the short time that she's been on. I've been really impressed with that, and I'm glad she was able to provide that update. Uh, has anybody got any questions? I see. Just want to uh, comment. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Terry. Go ahead, go ahead Terry. I just want to comment that, Missy, you were great when I came down there, and I think that it's really important. I think it was a really good decision that Bi State made because, as we all know, that public perception is – uh, almost as important as what we're actually doing, all the hard work that we're doing, because they need to know that uh, that we take everything that's going on very serious and that we're making these big changes. So I think she's great for the job and um, I just appreciate it. So thanks, Missy. Thank you, sir. And I follow you all on Twitter and maybe a couple other social media platforms. And I, I see you're over here on the east side quite a bit, Fairview Heights, O'Fallon, Belleville. Um, Kevin, even you and your wife for breakfast uh, last couple of Sundays ago in downtown Belleville. So we do appreciate that, that you're getting out region wide and uh, social media is, uh, is the key. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And again, don't forget, I would love to have you all here and I'd love to host anyone that would love to come down here. So please don't hesitate to contact me. Very good. Any other uh, comments or uh, questions for Missy or for Kevin? Okay, thank you both. I appreciate uh, that update. Uh, moving on, uh, Mr. Roach, any unscheduled business? We have none today. Good, good. Uh, your uh, report? So I, I thought we had quite a bit to talk about there in regards to safety and security, but the one issue that I wanted to point out is really culturally what we are trying to uh, discuss within this company. Both Missy Ann and Mr. Scott mentioned several times of kind of a, a shift where we're trying to integrate these what traditionally have been kind of siloed uh, professional teams. We're trying to be sure that to integrate these messages of safety and security in every single corner of the company. And I want to applaud them for the success in this area. But what is interesting is when I get a report from Mr. Scott, quite frankly, he'll come in and he'll talk about how uh, Dynamite, our engineering team, has been at supporting him and his efforts on SPP. Or I'll be talking to Mr. Curran and, you know, he is quite frankly, stressed out about being sure that our uh, fair integration system makes the time frame that we need to make SPP work. These are the kind of layers and cultural movements that are very important to the overall functioning of a company. Um, none of these projects can be seen as an individual acorn in itself. They must be integrated in a very comprehensive way. Um, and we've kind of shook things up a bit, asking, for instance, to have a major, what would be traditionally an engineering program headed by a project manager like Mr. Scott. He's done an excellent job at that. But also, ha so have been the teams that have supported him. It's been really encouraging to hear those kind of conversations and to hear, for instance, conversations about SPP in procurement or to hear a uh, conversation in engineering about uh, a fair integration. So those are the kind of things that as a company we're, we're pushing very much. I am doing that personally. Um, and then the next step is to communicate that out to the company because, or to the community, I should say, because we are literally going to change the curb appeal of transit in the St. Louis area. And I think it's a successful tack. Um, I appreciate your continued support of that. I think it's, it is absolutely key for us to uh, continue to move transit forward in the greater St. Louis area. Thank you, Chairman. Fine, thank you. Does anybody got any questions for Mr. Roach? Harry Nunmeyer, will you uh, uh, bring us up to date on the future uh, board meetings and committee meetings? Yes, the next operations committee meeting will be held on Thursday, May 23rd at 830 followed by the Audit, Finance, and Administration Committee meeting. We also have a Board of Commissioners meeting scheduled for Friday, June 21st, also beginning at 8.30 a.m. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roach, is there any need for an executive session? I do not believe so. 
Very good. The only items for consideration uh, for the executive session agenda are the approval of the minutes of the August 10th, 2023 and April 12th, 2024 safety and security committee executive sessions. If there are no corrections to these minutes and no discussions is needed, uh, the committee could uh, vote uh, without going into executive session. Um, do I have a motion to approve these minutes uh, in the regular meeting? So moved. So moved. Second. And a second. Okay, and a uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Windmiller. Aye. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Jackson Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Beach. Yes. Commissioner Simmons. Yes. The motion. There's passed. no. Thank you. If there's no further business to uh, come before the uh, board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.